Hi all, welcome. I'm Clem Millman here, CWOWI.eu. Welcome, this is the teaching about the Holy Spirit and I started to talk about the gifts of the Spirit a couple of weeks ago. No, maybe two weeks ago, I don't know. But today is actually part nine and you can find the other parts on YouTube and on my Facebook uh, page. And today I want to talk to you, continue talking about the gifts of the Spirit and I started with the charismatic gifts that we are oftentimes very familiar with. But all of the gifts, wherever you find them in the scripture, they are for the profit of other people. So the gifts, um, when you look at, the, at the, the, the life of Jesus and at the apostles and how they functioned and were moved by the Holy Spirit to do certain things or to speak certain things, they were mostly all done outside of a church meeting, outside of a house church meeting, because a church in the house is a New Testament context. They were done in daily life there where the people are. So the Lord Christ is in us. He, uh, he, he can use us the way he wants when there is a need he will look at us and he will use us it can be when two people are coming together for a cup of coffee or just walking somewhere or going shopping or whatever and they start talking about it the gifts of the spirit can flow because the holy spirit is in you and when someone says i need some wisdom i don't know what to do and suddenly you have a revelation and you know what a person needs to do it's not by your natural knowledge but by divine knowledge that is a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom so actually that is daily life Christ is in you so he can use you whenever he wants to use you and I'm sure that you are used by the Spirit many many more times and maybe you think I don't know because oftentimes we think you know the gifts only function in a church building when someone is like there comes a, a, a tongue and then it's quiet and then there comes an interpretation of tongues or someone says thus says the Lord and we think that's the only way that the gifts of the Spirit the charismatic spirit, uh, gifts function and we think well that's not for me I've never done that no but I'm sure and I'm quite confident about it that you have uh, moved in the gifts of the Spirit and function in it because the Lord is in you and he, it is so natural that you don't even know. But I want to classify it a little bit and explain it a little bit and then trusting the Father and the Holy Spirit that he will reveal it to you the times that you were used by him but you even didn't know because you thought it was just natural. It, you just had a knowing or whatever but that was the Holy Spirit. So that's why I want to um, uh, discuss it a little bit and teach you a little bit about it and talk about those labels that we, see, we, have, we saw in 1 Corinthians 12. But those labels are just for us, for our understanding. The first person who ever divined the gifts of the Spirit was Howard Carter. He was an Englishman, I think was born in uh, Birmingham and he died in uh, 1971 or something. He has written a very good book about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. If you want to order them, I think they are still available. You can go on line uh, on, uh, yeah Howard Carter is his name so gifts um, you have to you know the Holy Spirit is the in-between between the Father and between us you know the Father is in scriptures always seen on his throne and Jesus when he ascended to heaven he now he has not yet established his earthly kingdom his physical kingdom so the holy spirit is the one that is ministering both in heaven and on earth he hears from the father what he has for us or for someone else and he communicates that in different ways to us so we uh, he is the sort of in between between the father and between us so um so everything actually we experience in the spirit or in God that is through and is with the Holy Spirit. So every word you have, every perception, every knowing or dream or vision or hearing the voice of the Lord or the Holy Spirit, it is done via the Holy Spirit. And he is the spirit of truth. He is proceeding from the Father. So 1 Corinthians 12, we saw all those categories already, that the gifts of the Spirit, the word charis means grace. It's a grace, it's up to God, it's not up to us. And then we talked about the ministry gifts, which is the word diakonos, means service, that those are the gifts Ephesians 4, they serve the body of Christ so that the body of Christ will be strengthened and will mature in the Lord. And there are the energy gifts or the motivational gifts, what moves you, what energizes you, what gives you energy. So they are all a manifestation of the Spirit given to everybody to profit. And the gifts are not for our amusement, they are not for toys or whatever. They are not to be treated light because you are talking about the gifts of the Spirit. 
and don't think highly of yourself when you are, are used by the Lord uh, many, many times. Don't think, oh, wow, I am something. No, it's not about you. It's, be, it's be about someone else. You know, the Father and the Lord, they are the most humble people there are. So when you are not humble, you are not, not flowing in the, in the spirit of the Lord and of the Father. Okay, so there are those different categories. I started talking about it. I have my notes here, so I won't forget anything. We talked about the power gifts. You know, they do something. The revelation gifts reveal something. And there are the speaking gifts or the utterance gifts that say something. And we started off last week with the revelation gifts, the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge. Wisdom has to do with the future. Word of knowledge has to do with now or the past. But you can also say like knowledge is information. And wisdom is how to apply that information, how to apply that knowledge. So oftentimes those two gifts flow together. That the Father shows you some insight in what has happened in the past or what's happening now. And then he tells you something, what you should do about it. Otherwise that knowledge, you know, that knowledge does not benefit you. You know, you have to know what to do with it. So word of knowledge, you can say it's a divine revelation of the present, of the past. And the word of wisdom is a divine revelation of the future. Prophecy is something else. We'll talk about it for next week. Prophecy, according to 1 Corinthians 14, verse 3, has nothing to do with the future. It's just for encouragement, edification, and comfort. It has no future nor foretelling in it at all. Um, and the word of wisdom is not encouraging uh, per se. You know, the wisdom just, this is what you need to do. There's no comfort or edification in it. But it's just some information what you need to do. Okay, for instance, the word of knowledge in John 4, 16, the woman at the well, Samaritan uh, woman, when the Lord told her, call your husband. And she said, I have no husband. And the Lord says, yes, indeed, you are right. You had five and the one you're living with now is not your husband. That was a word of knowledge. He knew uh, about her situation now and about her past. By the way, interesting now what he was saying, the one you are living with now is not your husband. Many people today, even Christians, think that when you live with a man, you are married in the eyes of the Lord. No, you are not. That's definitely, this is a good scripture to, to study uh, about that. Okay. Uh, and sometimes, uh, you know, those, those uh, how the Lord, uh, it comes up from your spirit. It's very natural. Sometimes those things are like perceptions, are like a suggestion. It feels right to say that, or it feels right to do this. You know, sometimes you, you may even know something about a person and you have that feeling or someone comes up in your mind. Maybe I am sure that happens to you. And you think about that person and you think, oh, okay. Uh, I, I, I sort of perceive that the person is struggling financially or struggling with his health. That is a word of knowledge about now. And then you start praying about it and while they're praying for that person, uh, you, you start praying something for his future. Or maybe you discern that there is a spiritual attack. That's why the person is struggling. And that, that, is, uh, that is actually the gift of discernment when you um, um, perceive that there is like an influence of a demon. So those gifts all work together. Um, because we are living by the Spirit, you flow with the Spirit, it's not like you go in and out of the Spirit. Your whole day, your whole life is you are, Christ lives in you. So it's not like now I'm in the Spirit, now I'm not in the Spirit, I'm just in the natural. No, you are living by the Spirit. And a lot of times we do not know that we are moving by the Spirit, but oftentimes we are. Okay, what else do I need to talk about? Uh, let me see. Uh, discerning of spirit, uh, discerning of spirit. So every other yeah, I already mentioned that about the discerning of spirit. Okay, let's go to uh, Matthew 16. You know, that's the discerning of spirit where Jesus was telling his disciples that he had to go to the cross and die and he would leave them, but he would come back. And then Peter, st uh, Peter said, oh no, Lord, this will not happen to you. And then the Lord says immediately, get behind me, Satan. You know, that was the gift of discernment. He discerned that it was that it was influenced, that thought was influenced by Satan, that it, this was not Peter's uh, thought, but it was influenced by Satan. That's the gift of the discernment of spirit. In John, the first chapter, verse 42 and 49, 49, you can look it up in your scripture. There we find Andrew. He's introducing Peter to Jesus. And then uh, some days later, there you have the, his friend Philip. And he went to his friend Nathaniel to meet Jesus. And when Nathaniel approaches Jesus, Jesus says, Behold an Israelite in whom is no deceit or deception or guile. 
How did he know that? That was a manifestation of the discernment of spirit. Jesus knew in his, in his spirit the character, the basic character of the man. And then Nathaniel says, you don't even know me. How can you say that? And Jesus then says, before Philip invited you, I saw you sitting under the fig tree. Meaning that shows us that the discernment of spirit can also be visual. You know, you can actually every a spiritual dream or a spiritual vision falls under the category of discerning of spirit. And you probably have had a, a dream that you know that was from the Lord, was from the spirit. And oftentimes when you had that dream, it could be a warning. And then the Lord can give you wisdom what to do. So it's a word of wisdom. So or, or you know that there is an attack and then you know what to do. You can uh, command that demon to um, to stop with his, uh, his, um, his attack against you and ask the Father to send his angels to protect you. So you see that those gifts oftentimes go together. So you could say that all spiritual dreams and visions, visitations from the Lord, when you see the Lord, when you see angels, they fall under the heading of discerning of spirits. It's not a gift of discerning, but it's discerning of spirits. It's also the discerning of, um, of the spirit of a man, you know, like Jesus said, uh, indeed, this is a man in whom there is no deceit. It can happen to you that when, for instance, you see a preacher or someone is talking to you, a Christian, and you suddenly know he is lying. He is lying. How do you know that? You just know. That's discerning of spirit. Or you know he's operating through another spirit. Or there is a homosexual spirit behind it. Or there, yeah, that happened to me many, many years ago. Well, I happened more often. <laughs> many, many years ago that I saw someone. I knew it was a Christian. And immediately I knew, oh, I, I thought... I thought, you know, it came out so natural, that's a homosexual. But then later on, that guy went on, the, on his bike and had kids with him, and I understood he was married, and I thought, oh, I probably had it wrong. But later on, it, it, it was revealed that indeed he was, uh, he was work, how to say, he was influenced by the homosexual spirit and doing stuff that he should not do. It was gross sin, but the Lord already, sh uh, actually, uh, I experienced it. And at, at that time, I did not think... Well, I, 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 yeah, I wondered how that could be that I, I had a perception of the homosexual spirit, but he was still married. Okay, but that can happen because it flows so natural, you know. So that is how the spirit uh, works, how the spiritual gifts uh, work. Oh, I see my time is up. Okay, so what makes the manifestation of the spirit, the discerning of spirits? That he is the source of knowing. It's not a natural knowing. Sometimes you see someone and say, well, he gives me the creeps. That is a natural discernment. But a spiritual discernment is an outside revelation from the Father. And you suddenly know the character, you know the spirit behind the person. Or behind a manifestation. Or behind a service or whatever. Okay, that was enough for today. Hope you are there with me next time. Bye-bye.